we will officially get started. My name is Jana Lopez, and I am here with Book Baby to provide this webinar. And um, I want to say hello to all my students. I know there's several of you out there. To my clients, to folks from Book Baby, to um, all the new friends that are on here that have maybe not seen a webinar with me. And if you have seen a webinar with me, welcome back. Welcome back. And I'm gonna just say, it is my honor and it is my purpose to be here with you today. This is what I am born to do. This is my passion, it's my purpose. And helping people realize dreams is like a gift. Every day I pinch myself that I get to be in the mix of helping people reach amazing dreams. So again, my name is Jana Lopez, and I am a writing coach, a retreat leader, a class facilitator. I was the 2023 Poet Laureate Ambassador in Santa Fe. And I am a published author and a poet and a photographer. And so really what I love to do is just meet people where they are, whether it's this setting, doing a webinar for Book Baby or um, teaching a class. I've gone out last week. I went to an assisted living facility and I worked with um, seniors and encouraged them to write down their wisdom and their memoirs. So to me, it's all about connection clarity, and confidence. And so one of the things that I hear a lot, and I've worked with thousands of people, is that one of the number one barriers is time. How many of you feel like time is a challenge when it comes to the writing? If so, what I'd like you to do is to put a one in the chat if you feel that time is one of your greatest barriers towards writing. So I see a lot of ones flashing, yes, and I'm with you. And so I also wanna talk about why I'm here with Book Baby because I think it's important. Um, I had dreams of writing a book and publishing a book for at least three to four years. And I talked about writing a book for about three years and probably actually wrote the book in one. But when I discovered that I could self-publish and I had seen Stephen Spots, the former Book Baby president, speak at a writing conference, he was there representing Book Baby. And at the time, the idea of self-publishing felt not as um, viable or not as amazing maybe as getting published with a big publishing house. But all that changed because I realized that when I self-published or if I self-published that I would have number one, total freedom and number two, total autonomy. I could write what I wanted to, how I wanted to. And for me, that's a pretty big deal because I talk a lot about the importance of writing for an audience of one. And I'm going to talk to you more about like some of my philosophical approaches. But in the meantime, this is what came out of my first venture with Book Baby. And I got to say, when I was going to go get this out of the um, closet, I opened up a box and it reminded me of that joy and excitement and thrill. There's nothing like it when you get to crack open that box with a knife. And it's your book and it's your dream. And what was so amazing about this and the writing methods that I teach, what I talk about, what students come to connect with me about from all over the globe is that writing is a conversation that you have with yourself. And we'll unpack that a little bit. And so to help people get over the blocks, the barriers, the procrastination, the fears, the doubts, all the things I've been there and have done that and have more than one t-shirt to celebrate. But for all the people, I wanna tell you, like I know Judge is on here, so I'm gonna call him out. So I help people with books like this, also published through Book Baby. And this is Judge Kemp's beautiful book of poetry. This is another one, Daniel Hayes, Cairns. And so people come to me with ideas. And then they're like, 
how am I going to get there? And so we talk about it. And the one thing I want you to recognize is that I do not believe, this is my own opinion, that there is a one size fits all approach for every writer, for every book, for every genre, for every struggle, for every dream. It's really in terms of my philosophical approach and teaching and methodology, it's about meeting you where you are because otherwise it's not going to work. It won't be meaningful. You're going to struggle and it's going to suck. The whole thing will just be a, a drag. <laughs> and I don't want that. Like I want people to feel alive and inspired and accomplished and excited that they've done something really quite incredible. And so we had almost 900 people for this red, the register for this webinar. And what I want to tell you is to me, each and every one of you out there represents something very, very, very important to me. And that is a dream, a desire, and uh, a wish to fulfill something. And so that's what I'm here to help you get closer to and to get inspired by, because I have had several people who have seen one of these webinars and then within six months, have had their books in their hands. And that has happened quite a bit. So what we're going to do is um, my teaching style is just, I'm here. I'm going to give you my all. I hope you get something out of whatever it is I say. I may not address every concern or question, but what I would like you to do is I do not read the chat while we're in session, but I promise you, I read each and every comment and I will answer each and every question in the chat. So if you have a question that comes up, go ahead and put it in and I will address it. And also we're gonna talk about a few ways if you wanna stay in touch with me and work with me. I've got a couple of things that are accessible and available. I have a booklet you can download. I have a class that starts next Tuesday. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I'm offering a special today and, um, or you can get all three. And I'm also, if you're interested, which we'll talk about towards the end is I'm doing a finish your book retreat in Sedona in November that I will take applications for. So there we go. And um, yeah, I'm really glad you're here and I'm really glad that you've shown up for yourself. And that's one of the things that I talk about a lot with writers is the key to starting is just realizing that it takes showing up for yourself. And that can mean a lot of things. And so time, right? We, we always wish we had more time. And so what I'd like you to do to get started, if you have a pen and paper handy, I would encourage you to get a pen and paper handy. Number one, take notes, even though this will be recorded, but also I'm gonna invite you to write some things to reflect and figure out what it is that I'm talking about and how it connects for you. So I may present a lot of ideas, but ultimately what I want is that what I'm saying reaches you and connects to you and inspires you because this is the way it works. If you connect and you internalize or embody whatever I'm saying, then changes are afoot. So, um, yeah. Oh, so I just wanted to go back before I finished too, that my connection to book baby is just, I'm such a fan. I ended up publishing my first book with them. And, um, to me, it was so important to have somebody to talk to. I had spent so long, so much energy and time and love into my book that it meant something to me to have the capacity to pick up the phone and talk to a human because so many of the publishing companies out there are like robots that you have to talk to and chat bots and emails. And for me, it meant something to have the personal touch. And I was always really impressed with the fact that Book Baby as a company cares so much about making writers authors that they're providing this webinar, right? Like they're gifting you this time. And so that says a lot to me about a company. And so I do strongly 
love and advocate and believe in Book Baby. I'm a fan. We are not professionally tethered in any way other than love and admiration. So I just want you to know that it's coming from the heart. It's sincere when I talk about Book Baby. So you've got a pen and paper. Awesome. And what I want you to do is I'm going to give you an invitation is what I call it. I don't call it a writing prompt because a prompt infers you have to do something. And for me, it's all about an invitation. So writing is an invitation and not an expectation. That's the place I usually start with people. So my first invitation I want to give you, take a few moments or a moment and jot this down. Something I know to be true about time is, so what I'd like you to do is write it down. If you wanna put it in the chat, that's cool too, but I'd like you to take a moment and what is it that you know to be true about time? We keep coming up against the same struggles over and over and over when it comes to writing. And so my thought is I don't, I'm not a magician, unfortunately. I am not able to, um, wave a magic wand and give you more time. I would if I could. There are no pigeons <laughs> that I can turn into clocks magically. Um, but I feel like uh, the idea about time and what I want you to take away from today is to understand that writing is a relationship that you have with yourself and your words and as a relationship, it includes showing up, being available, having grace, giving yourself that time and that attention that you would to a friend. Because we can't expect that we haven't written for however many weeks or months, carrying around that guilt and that burden. How many of you say, I should write, I should have written, I have to write, I need to write, why haven't I written? And gone through that cyclical loop of mental chatter and hope and desire, and then it slips into doubt and fear and disappointment. And then the more stuck you get, the more stuck you are. And this is, this is what happens. And so the important thing is to understand that it requires a new orientation to your ideas of time, how you spend your time and the ways you spend your time and why you write at all. And so interestingly, I, I think that we have a lot of perceptions about time. And so getting clear about your perception of time is super important because I hear all the time, oh my God, I am so stressed. I've got to take the kids. I've got this job. I've got my husband's thing or my wife's thing or my partner's thing. I've got the dog to take care of. I've got my job. And I really understand that all of those pushes and pulls and demands on our time is not inspiring. It's not creative. And we end up feeling completely parched, like we're out in a desert because we're so thirsty. We're so like just dying to give ourselves that drink of creative expression. And it ends up that we are last on the list, which we will talk about too. So I find it really fascinating that one of our largest and most unspoken relationships that we have aside from our family and our friends and ourselves is the relationship to time. It's a relationship. It totally is a relationship. We're either looking back, we're looking forward, we're remembering, we're dreaming, we're regretting, we're hoping. And we go through all these iterations of how we recycle the notion of time. And every day we wake up and we do it all over again. And so one of the most important places to start that I wanna to talk to you about is to understand that you have to meet your life 
exactly as it is. You have to meet yourself exactly how you are and where you are because we always want more time. And guess what? We don't get more time. It's just that simple. We want more time. We're not going to get more time. And it's the illusion of time. Even if you think about the sun setting or sun rising, it's kind of an illusion because the sun is not moving. We are. The sun is the fixed point. Although we think that is what's moving, kind of the illusion, oh, sun setting. It's because we're spinning in space and we're spinning around the sun. So it's us that move that moves around the fixed point of time. And so, um, and I have a really interesting, I don't know, kind of philosophical belief about time. Most people I know tell me that they want to finish a book before they, you know, they, some people are ill. So they want to do it before they, while they still can. And some people have big stories to share that's related to helping their business. Some people have the fantasy novel that won't keep them, you know, that won't be quiet and keeps them up at night. And so I, I believe that we will always want more time. And I feel like we have a, an expiration date on our bodies, in our lives, that's kind of fixed out there in the future. If you think of it as starlight, an expiration date, like on a milk carton, one day a year, and I'm not trying to be morbid or dark, I'm just telling you the reality. One day every year, we pass through the anniversary of our death date and we don't even know it. And what I want is for people to not ever regret that they didn't get something they wanted to done. And I have a friend that I was working with on her book and she was working so hard and she passed away of a heart attack in the middle. She couldn't finish it. And I, that story haunts me. And I think about that a lot. I have a dear friend who I've been working with, who's so close to getting her draft done and she had a heart issue and she's been in the hospital. So this is it, like here and now, we always talk about what we're gonna do someday, but someday is here, someday is here, it's now. So here is yesterday's someday. That's what I want you to know. And so get clear about how you orient yourself to time. Get, get clear about how you orient yourself to time. So the idea of meeting yourself where you are and how you are is really, really important because most of the struggle comes from the illusion that we're gonna have that someday chunk of time, the someday chunk of a day or two days or a week or weeks, and maybe you will. And that's awesome. And how are you going to stay connected to your conversation every day? How are you going to stay connected to what matters to you? Now, one thing I also want to share is I am not of the camp where I believe you have to write every day in order to be productive. I do not teach that at all. I did not like the writer's way. It didn't work for me. If it works for you, awesome, but it didn't work for me because what that did is it set me up to feel bad about myself and set me up for failure, the daily pages. So Sunday would come and I'd have my notebook all ready and I'd have my mental, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get up and do my morning pages. And then the morning would come and I'd hit the snooze <laughs> and I didn't get up. I didn't do my morning pages because I was late for an appointment. And so at the end of the day, I'm like, God, you know, already the first day and I don't do it. And so Monday bled into Tuesday, Tuesday bled into Wednesday. And before you know it, I felt terrible about myself. And that is not the place I want you to write from. That is not an inspired place to write from. So um, getting clear about your own perceptions around time is the number one thing. And what I would like for you to just think about 
is do you always feel hurried? Do you always feel overwhelmed? Do you always wake up catch, trying to catch your breath? And I understand that life is life. I do. I really do. But getting clear with yourself is part of how we start to reorient and reimagine our connection and relationship to how time shows up for us and how we show up for our time. And so that's the first thing I want to really just emphasize is get clear about this illusion of time. Number one, you want more time. Number two, you're not getting more time. So that leads into how are you going to meet yourself and your life exactly where it is? So you can write, you can be inspired. And so that leads me to the next point. And I touched on it a little bit, but it's called the someday separation. Believing that writing or completion of a book lives out there or as some day. How many of you have said to yourself or to your friends, I'm going to finish that book someday. I'm going to write that book someday. If that is true for you, be loud and proud and just put that one, drop it in the chat. It's okay because we've all been there. So, yes, I understand. I'm just kind of watching the ones flash by. There's a lot of them. So believing that the writing or the completion of the book lives out there or is someday separates you from the process and the gifts and the surprises that writing really actually offers. And what this does on a very subconscious level that appears over and over and over again in your life and in your day is that it's as if the words, ideas, and creativity are separate from who you are, your wisdom, and your dreams. So I'll say that again. It's as if you say, when you say someday, you are creating a separation between yourself and your wisdom and your dreams. So the key is to start imagining, writing, exploring, or expressing as part of, not separate from. It's as part of your day, as part of your being, as part of how you show up in the world. As the world around you already exists, just as it is, not separate from you, not separate from your dream. And so what this looks like and what I teach and talk about, and, and a few of my students are on there. If you want to put in the chat, if you want to comment on this, one of the things I talk about is just waking up in the morning and with coffee or tea or whatever you're doing, right? Five minutes, like literally five minutes. And what I use is what I call invitations invitations and invitations can be words or images or quotes or um, photos or looking around your kitchen it can be the chicken hanging up on the wall it could be the clock it could be whatever it is that you want but just calling it an invitation and just inviting yourself to be with and be part of whatever is happening for you. Five minutes, that's it. And you, if you can't do it in the morning, do it in the afternoon when you're having lunch. If you can't do it when you're having lunch. I'm pretty sure you can find five minutes to just be with and have what I call a conversation with yourself. Now, even if you have it as an expectation, the big expectation that you're going to get your novel done, you're going to get your series done. I had a gentleman reach out to me that he's got it. He wants to get four books done by a certain amount of time. And whenever we put those big, huge expectations on us, it's like a shoe on the throat. I mean, I can't tell you how many people come to me and including myself where I have such big expectations that I can't 
begin to imagine how I'm going to live into those expectations. And writing from a place of expectation is probably the most uninspired place to write from, at least for me. Now, maybe for some of you, you need the structure and anything I'm telling you, this is just my philosophy. This is just what I've learned. This is just what I've done to help so many people unlock and unblock these places where we get stuck around our writing to where they can start to reimagine a new conversation, a new relationship, find a new way, make new discoveries, and everything starts to flow. And it's amazing, 100%, 100%. There's not one person that I haven't worked with that I've not seen just reimagining this relationship to writing and understanding that you have to meet yourself where you are and that writing is best served and flowed when you come from inspiration. And I don't care what you're writing. I don't care if you're writing an email or you're writing your next great novel. <laughs> inspiration is where it's at expectation kills the flow in my opinion and the other thing I want to talk about is all of the places we get locked we get blocked and we find whatever it is that we can to get stuck so one of the things that I'm going to offer I'm going to put this in the chat right now is I have a 20 page booklet that um, talks about all the reasons why we procrastinate and all of the ways that we get stuck. I talk about some of the logistics. It's a 20 page booklet that takes you through to unlock all the places that you're blocked because a lot of times we come to the writing table with a whole committee. <laughs> The whole committee is there to join us and to tell us why we can't write, why we shouldn't write, what's wrong with us. So getting clear, that's another webinar for another time. Actually, I do. I did talk about that. But in the chat is the link for the webinar specials. And it's a 20 page booklet that just really helps you focus on your orientation to the places you get stuck. And I believe there are four. We get stuck in our heads. And this is all the things we have in terms of expectations of what we think we're supposed to write and how it's supposed to go and all the reasons why we're terrible and we shouldn't and we're not deserving to write. Um, we get stuck in our emotional spaces and that's the places where we just don't have the feeling of worth or that our stories matter. Um, and emotional blocks can be really tough to work around, but it is possible once you recognize them. The third place we get stuck is tactical overwhelm. And I'm guessing there's quite a few of you out there that were like, how do I get started? How do I organize my chapters? What do I do about editing? I don't know how this thing's gonna flow. So tactical overwhelm. And then the last place we get stuck is in these spiritual places. And by that, I don't care what religion or faith you have. I'm talking about the relationship we have with ourself and our deep expression outside of what we think or feel. Like the truest, deepest parts within us that when we write something or a character appears, we're like, where did that come from? And I call that place the you-ness. Y-O-U dash N-E-S. Yes. And so we get stuck. It's like an elevator. Sometimes we're in our minds. Sometimes we're in our emotions. Sometimes we're in tactical overwhelm. So in order to kind of begin this new orientation and making the most of the time you do have is to understand why you're stuck and where you're stuck. So what I'd like to do is number one is stuck in your head. Number two is stuck in your emotions. Number three is stuck in your um, tactical overwhelm. And number four is your spiritual places you get stuck. So go ahead and drop in the chat. And if you're a one, two, three, four, I have been that girl. So wherever you get stuck, your head, your heart, getting overwhelmed with all the details or just that place within your spirit that can't seem to come up and come out. And I also want to say that 
being stuck sucks. It is hard. It is painful. It's stressful. You you can spend so much time in your head berating yourself and that does not feel good. Nobody likes to have the big dream over here and the incapacitation over here and not knowing how to get them to connect. And I always say to people, if you could have gotten your book done by now, you would have. I mean, we don't love being stuck. It's the hardest thing. And we end up becoming so hard on ourselves. But I believe it's because we've spent years and years and years and years of being taught and told what writing is supposed to be, how it's supposed to go, who it's for, all the rules, all the red pens, all the criticisms. And we come into this writing space with thousands of sensory memories embedded in our DNA around all of the ways we are not good enough to fulfill this dream. And so getting clear about where you're stuck and why is really a time saver because I can't tell you how many times I've sat there and looked at the screen and wasted, you know, getting frustration and then I go and scroll cat videos or I go and clean the refrigerator. I'll go and eat something. I mean, I don't know anything at that point to get out of the pain of being so stuck is better than being there and being stuck. So I'll just avoid, 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 avoid. How many of you avoid? Just put in the chat. Yes, I avoid because <laughs> you're my people. So. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Yes, I see Abigail. I see James. I see John, Suzanne. Yes. All right. And so knowing why you're stuck, and I'll put the link in the chat again for the booklet, because what happens is, um, and I really do love this booklet. It's $8.88. It's totally easy to download. And I love it because I really walk through the places people get stuck. And that's one of the biggest time savers is to understand why you can't move forward in the first place. So the next thing, and we're just moving right along here. I hope you're having fun and learning a few things. Um, so the next thing I wanna talk about is getting with reality. Getting with reality. And that to me is how do you actually spend your time? And this is almost like looking at a diary. And when you're in junior high school, it can be really embarrassing when you start to get with like what's true and what's real. And I, I am one of those cat video scrollers, I admit it. And social media probably has killed an extra brain cell or two more than I, I care to admit. But um, thinking about time, it, it's a hard one to digest. And so I want you to think about it specifically in terms of writing time, in terms of writing time. And so um, let's see, how would my writing time used to go? It doesn't go that way for me anymore, but it used to be that I would sit down, I would start to get in my head, I would think about all the things I told myself I was going to write, I would look at the cursor, and it would do this. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm starting to panic and get a little sweaty, and I don't know what happens, and then I'm out. That's it. Something just like the static on the TV. I just can't, I can't move. I can't move forward. And so um, part of that is understanding that there's unrealistic expectations at play, that work has to be a certain standard or length. Um, avoidance, you know, scrubbing the shower tile. I swear to God, true story. I started, was working on my book and I'm like, I think I'm going to go scrub my shower tile. So what's the most embarrassing thing you do to avoid writing? Put it in the chat. I want to see. Not maybe embarrassing, but what's something you know you do to avoid writing and kind of waste, not waste, but divert time? Um, 
And, you know, part of this that goes with, I take a nap too. I saw a take a nap. I'm with you. So part of what goes into this too is you say, oh, if I had more time, but the truth is it's the freeway. Meaning if you build a couple more lanes, I swear to you, they're going to get filled with cars. So even if you had blocks of time that were gifted to you that magically appeared, my guess is you might could likely fill them with some of the same things you're doing just in a different block. So that's why reorienting yourself to time is so important. And um, just understanding meeting yourself where you are. And so we're, we're going to talk about how to do that. But the one of the other things that that I had mentioned was this idea of um, Understanding your blocks. I can't emphasize that enough. I cannot emphasize that enough. If you can get clear about what is keeping you stuck, you're getting to the root of the issue so that you can move around it. Because if we are doing the same things every time as we sit and write, and those problems are dwelling and existing within us, festering and sitting like a cesspool collecting mosquitoes, we're not going to get a different outcome. So getting to the heart of why you get stuck, where you get stuck. And with that is the other element, which I want to talk about is getting to the heart of your purpose of why you're writing, getting clarity about your purpose. I did another book baby webinar. It's on YouTube around purpose and um, helping people get clear around their purpose is what I do because once people get clear around their purpose, and now I'm not talking about, oh, I want to write a bestseller. Oh, I want to like use this book to, you know, get more clients or, oh, you know, I, whatever it is, those are all valid, but I call those reasons. And to me, those are not purpose. Reasons are the things that we tell ourselves that we want to accomplish as an outcome, as a result. Purpose is the thing within you that is so clear and so honest and so expressed and so creative and so excited and so inspired and so unblocked that when you get clear on your purpose, it really does cut down on time. I'm, and, I'm, and I know that sounds like, how does it work? But I know there's a couple of students in there that are listening, if any of you want to put in the chat how getting clear on your purpose helped save you time, I would love for you to share that with everybody who's on here right now. And so understanding these things is part of how we reorient to how we are with our time, because if we're not getting more time and the time is at as it exists, then we have to get really super clear. And one of the things about time is identifying the places you get stuck, your purpose so you can move forward, the things that overwhelm you. And um, when it comes to writing or publishing, it's gonna be time let it be productive time. And so that's another one of the reasons why I love Book Baby. And I'm really happy that Ramona's here because I wanted her just to hop on and say hi. Um, and how self-publishing really does save time. Self-publishing through Book Baby really helped me save time because um, they took care of a lot of the details I don't really know how to do. I'm not that tech savvy. And so it really made a difference to get clear on how self-publishing was going to save me time. And so I need to figure out, Ramona, how to unpin you and just to pop on and talk about what it is like to um, do what you do with Book Baby and what is the one thing you wish authors would know and i am still trying to figure out how to unpin you okay can people hear go ahead there you go okay 
Hi, everyone. I'm Ramona Pina. I am a senior publishing specialist at Book Baby. Um, and Jenna has Jana has so many great uh, words of wisdom, so I hope you all cling to it. I feel like the reason maybe why she gravitated to Book Baby is because we echo a lot of those same sentiments. Um, we work with authors when you have a finished manuscript, but we have a lot of resources to help you while you're in that process of figuring out the best way to finish that story um, and also to polish it up once you've written it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And maybe sometimes perfection slows you down. Uh, I've been at Book Baby for almost seven years. I've talked to probably thousands of authors. And like Jana was saying, you know, self-publishing, there's still self. So time is an investment and you have to, you know, really invest in yourself. And at Book Baby, we're really here to support you in that. And so there are a lot of resources. So many authors tell me when they call in, I thought I was done with this. You know, I thought writing was the hard part. And there are so many other elements like editing your book. And then like Jana was saying, transforming that into a final product. But the beauty is that, like she said, you know, it's not a one size fits all. There's no ballpark for it. Everybody is different and so is their projects. And so when you work with Book Baby, we really work with each individual to figure out, help you understand what works best for you. And like, uh, again, we have so many resources. If you go to our website, bookbaby.com, you can see them. But again, we can help you with editing. There's so many different options. Um, we have in-house designers, but you'll have someone like myself that will help you along the way in that process um, to be like your, your buddy along the way. And, and it's not like those other companies where once we've gotten your money and, you know, okay, yeah, this is the process, you know, we're here for life. As long as you're with us, we're here to, to, to remain like a family and help you uh, for this project and any other future projects you have. So I hope that kind of gives you a comprehensive view, but yes, time is valuable and we're here to help you um, use yours efficiently as best as we can. Thank you, Ramona. And I can vouch for the experience. I truly can. Um, and it it's when you put your heart and your soul into something um, and you can choose to go anywhere to self-publish, but, but book baby is my go-to. And I am, I am a fan because of what they helped me do to realize not just one dream. I'm a three three time dreamer, and I've got my fourth book coming out called The Bypass to Brilliance, and it's the creative writing invitation method for clear expression, and it's based on everything I'm teaching and talking about. So, I've given you kind of the philosophical overview. We've talked about it. I'm hoping that everything I'm talking about has given you something to think about. Can you see me okay? Ramona, can you see me okay? I, I, I can see you just fine. Okay, yeah. somebody said something about losing the video. All right, so um, can everybody else see me? No? Oh, weird. Can you see me now? Yes. Oh, well, we're just gonna hang out in this <laughs> way. Um, and so, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't know what happened there. All right, so we've talked about how to save time on the front end with this idea of reorienting yourself so you're not stuck, getting clear about what your purpose is, getting clear about where you might be stuck and why you might be stuck and utilizing that as part of the um, way you think about you're writing time because all that mental time and energy, like maybe you expected you were going to give the top seven tips of how to spend your time. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your time because you can figure out how to spend your time. What I want for you is to understand everything I'm talking about saves time because um, as the webinar is titled, it's about an inspired path forward without the push and pull. So if you're aware of how time is being spent, if you're clear on your purpose, if you understand where you get stuck, and if you have a clear sense of um, integrating it, we're going to talk about that now. And so the first thing is to meet yourself exactly in your life where it is. And so I'm going to call this evaluating your CQ which I call the creativity quotient. 
So what this means to me is, um, when do you feel most creative? And a lot of people don't really consider when they are the most creative. They may be, I mean, I myself, when I wake up at like five in the morning, I can get a lot of writing done between the hours of five and eight. That's when I'm the most creative. And so um, understanding your creativity quotient is really super important. And if you're more creative in the middle of the day, are you more creative after you've had a meal? Are you more creative um, right before you go to bed? And so go with your flow. This is about meeting yourself where you are. Go with your flow. And so just understanding when you're the most creative. The next thing I wanna talk about is invitations. And so um, I'm gonna try to pin myself again cause I get super distracted. So let me know. Oh, here we are. There we are. Are you, are we good? Can everybody see me okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so invitations. Create invitations in your life so that you can meet yourself where you are and right when they appear. Invitations can be a song, invitations can be a photograph and start to think of yourself as inviting yourself into a conversation every time you write. Whether you're writing a novel and you've got fabulous characters, you could be at the grocery store and just bring a pad of paper and jot notes around the people that you're seeing, their characteristics, their traits, how they look, what they say. And once you start to imagine that everything around you is an invitation, you are alive to the idea of invitations everywhere you go. And pretty soon your mind and your energy is gonna start clicking into the way you're composing words, the way you're getting ideas for your book or your characters. Pretty soon things start to come around in terms of being alive. And when they're alive, you're inspired. When things are alive around you, you're inspired. And so meeting yourself where you are, meeting yourself where you are. Let me ask you, do you have a goal? And if you have a goal, is it word count? Is it based on discipline? Is it that you're supposed to do a certain amount every day? And I want to invite you to the idea of having an intention instead of a goal, because I'm not saying that goals are bad. I'm not saying that we can't dream. I'm not saying that it's not good to put something out there to work towards. And if you are someone who needs discipline, you do NaNoWriMo and you need 50,000 words in a month, then you do you. What I'm saying is for most people that I come across that truly want to write, those things that we put out there in front of us go back to the separation between us and the thing itself. And I want you to start integrating it into yourself, who you are, how you feel, what you notice, what you discovered, how you're, how you're excited or when you're inspired. So all of these things I'm talking about actually save time. So I'm being told still no video. Is that true? Are you guys getting video? Cause I'm not really reading the chat. I'm sort of glancing. I'm okay. Okay. I have video. All right. So I'm just going to keep going. Looks fine. All right. So what I'd like you to do is to take a moment and you can put it in the chat if you want. If you were to shift the word goal about finishing a book and an intention with finishing the book, what does that do for you? How, does it help? Does it, does it open something up? And if it doesn't, that's fine. But I'm just curious if it does. Um, intention. Okay, so we've got some mix. Not really. Okay, takes the stress away, Barbara says. Um, and this is how I feel like writing from the inspired place will be more productive. All right, the next thing, and I might go a few minutes over and if you have to go, that's fine, but I'm 
feeling like I have a couple more things to talk about and I'm trying to mind the time. So I'm pretty much going to go over a few minutes and I'm just putting it out there now. Since you are tracking time. <laughs> uh, okay. The next thing, how many of you has a list? Meaning when you end up last on your list, how many of you have a list where you're last? <laughs> how many of you has a list? And how many of you are last on your list? Meaning you're like kids, jobs, responsibilities, chores, activities, family obligations. And I can't tell you, I this I understand. We are last on our list. And what I want for you to start imagining or thinking about to reorient yourself to this relationship to writing, to inviting yourself into a conversation, to being inspired and recognizing what's keeping you stuck, finding your purpose. These are all the things I've talked about. Why do you put yourself last on that list, really? Like, what is it about the idea of productivity, how it equates to your worth? So a lot of people I know end up getting stuck in the trap that if they're not being productive, that they're not worth as much. I know that people who go into retirement, I've worked with a lot of people who have re been retired and they lose their sense of identity because they're not being productive. And so when we have a long, long list, a long, 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 long list, everybody's on it, everything is on it. <laughs> And we're at the bottom of it, tired and thirsty and overlooked in our own lives. And so getting clear on who or what is on your list is a fantastic invitation that I truly encourage you to think about because you are worth getting to know. You are worth hearing your words you are worth your expression, and above all, you are worth your own time. This is your clock. These are your coins and your purse to spend how you want them. They're your time coins. So how are you going to spend them? So can you find five minutes to meet yourself where you are, wherever you are? Can you at least give yourself some way to imagine putting yourself into your own day and integrating something that you care so much about. Writing is not frivolous. Writing is not being unproductive. Writing is not the thing that everybody else gets to do, but you. This is it. This is your life. This is your expression. This is your dream. And there is nothing that's worth more time invested, even if it's in increments, than you and your dream and your like chance to see yourself through. And that was what helped me realize on this was I had talked about it for years, but the thing that got me clicked into gear was I am worth getting to know. And that is what I told myself. And so pretty soon with the shift, things started to roll into place and it made a really great, great addition to my life to just breathe only little bits in moments in my time. So the way you can start to imagine this not being last on your list is number one, designate time. And it could be I don't know, you know, you make a date with yourself. I have one client or a student who put it in their calendar for Saturday at 3 p.m. And then they took themselves to the Starbucks and they did it twice a month. That was it. But that was their time that they designated for themselves. So designate some time. One amazing thing is to come to a retreat. Now I am offering a retreat and I have offered retreats, but I got to tell you, whether you come to my retreat or somebody else's, giving yourself a weekend away somewhere else to write is 
absolutely the greatest gift you'll ever give yourself. And that's part of designating time. That may be the huge dream, but even if you are putting it in your calendar, number one, designate. Number two, show up for yourself. Show up. Don't say, oh my God, I got to change that appointment. Uh-uh. You put it in. Show up. You get an invitation. You RSVP. Yes, I'm there. And then the third thing is to protect it. Protect it. Make sure that you guard that little morsel for yourself because you're always going to have things that are going to get in the way because that's life. So meeting yourself where you are means protecting, protecting, protecting that cherished little morsel of air. I mean, for me, it's like air and I want to see the dream through. I want to understand. And there's other ways to designate time too. I'm doing a class. It's going to start next Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. It's four weeks. It's an hour and a half. Join me once a week for four weeks. Designate that time. Come right with me in my class. Hour and a half, only four weeks. You can take you can take the time if you want to make the time, it's just reorienting to yourself around the importance of time as it relates to this. This is not the thing that's the someday thing. This is the now thing. This is the you thing. This is the life thing. This is the purpose thing. This is the expression thing. This is the creative thing. And you know what? Life is so overwhelming. We have enough worries and stresses and expectations were pulled in so many directions and it's probably not going to change anytime in the nearest futures but we can provide and give and fulfill ourselves in spite of it all and because of it all and with it all and that it's not a someday it's a now it's a here and so um, one of the things I would like is for you all to put, I'm gonna put the ways you can stay in touch with me. So, um, and I do have a couple more ideas. 6 p.m. Pacific time, Marianne, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And so um, we covered a lot of ground. We covered a lot of ground. Um, and I do have a couple of questions people sent in. And I want to talk about the three ways you can connect with me if you want. I have that booklet, the PDF, uh, that talks about all the ways to unblock procrastination, get clear on where you're stuck, get clear on your purpose. It's 20 pages. You download it and you work through the questions. And then I have a class that starts next Tuesday at um it's called get brave be brilliant and we're going to look at all of the ways we can get to our clearest truest most authentic forms of connection and clarity around our writing it's four weeks and i have um you can do a one-on-one -on -one session with me and i promise to unlock and clear all your blocks and you can get all three I have a special webinar where you can get all three. And um, if you're interested, I am going to have a finish your book writing retreat in Sedona, Arizona in November. And that is an application process. And if you're interested in that writing retreat, you can drop a one and I will reach out to you and um, we'll share with you about that writing retreat and give you the information for the application. So um, here is where I have a question. I got a question from Catherine and maybe some of you are experiencing this. Um, she asked that her biggest struggle with writing time is that she's chronically ill and she wants to be able to write every day, but it, because of exhaustion, it's hard. And so I do work with a student who has post-polio 
And um, she really struggles with energy levels. And so what I want to tell you, Catherine, is um, when you have the energy, really conserve that energy and ways that you can write. Here's some things. One of the things that I do is I talk into my phone when I'm walking or if I'm stuck in traffic, I will talk into my phone on my notes. How many of you would have to drive and get stuck in traffic? <laughs> How many of you go walking? And you know, for me, it's about meeting my life where I am. So I will talk into my phone and take notes. And to me, this is writing. And this is an important way to meet myself where I am. Um, the second thing is I um, try to create spaces literally in between the cracks of my day, five minutes, five minutes in the morning with coffee or tea. Um, I have a very cool writing inspiration deck that I created for clients and students. And I will just pick a card in the morning and it's got some beautiful photos and some words. And I just write to whatever comes up. So rethinking the way you connect to your writing and invitations. So what I'm going to do now is there is uh, probably 136, it says, on here. And um, if you, I won't be able to answer like tons of questions, but um, what app do I use to speak into my phone? It's the notes app. You can look it up. I'm sure Android has one, but I know iPhone has one too. I'm glad I helped you, Catherine. Yeah, I really am rooting for you. And um, if you want, you know, a little bit more support or something, just reach out to me and you know, find that, find that inspiration and energy when it, when it belongs to you. Um, so does anybody else have like, I'll stay on for a few minutes. I'm going to end the recording, um, because this is the hour, this part. Uh, so we're taught about what writing has to do, what it has to be, what is expected of us. And this happens hundreds of thousands of moments over, over time where we suddenly have a huge brick wall built up around our tiny little tender expression. Writing is the only form of expression that has served a purpose, that has had expectations, and that has been told how it has to be and what it has to do since the time we can hold something like a pencil or a pen in our hands. Now, if you want to go and become a ballet dancer or you want to play the violin, it doesn't mean you need those things to survive. You don't need to fill out a job application by playing the violin, unless, of course, you're applying for the symphony. But my point is we use writing as part of our everyday existence. And it's for school, it's for papers, it's for grades, it's for job applications, it's for proposals, it's for emails. So writing over and over and over and over and over again is constructed as a form of expectation with purpose. So it suddenly becomes very separate from us because it may not be what we imagine or how we express or what we wanna create, but it has all the barriers and outcomes and expectations around it. So it starts to separate and peel away. When we're very young and we're creative and we have dreams, we, we, we wanna write poems. I always wanted to write poems. Then you hand it, your tender little poem to a teacher and they criticize it. I wrote a piece, this is a true story and I got, it was a gorgeous poem and I got an 18 out of 20. I'll never forget this because I used a couple of too many commas. <laughs> I was 14. The teacher didn't say, wow, good for you for thinking about that or being imaginative or being creative. I got two points knocked down because I had a couple of too many commas. So I feel like the separation is what we are used to and conditioned to. But in truth, what I teach and talk about, the you-ness, the part of you and who you've always been and who you always are, wants to connect, wants to express, wants to create, wants to be free. 
It's just all the barriers that we put up in our minds and embed so deeply that we are separate from ourselves. So that I hope answers your question. Um, let's see. Um, Olivia wants to know, what about those of us who are children's book authors? Well, Olivia, good for you for writing children's books. We need more books out there that create magic and inspiration. And um, I think for me, the way I would talk to you if you were coming to me as a client or as a student and you asked me, how do you tap into connecting with what you want to write for a children's book, I would say to connect to that part of you that still feels like a child, the way you see the world, the way you imagine the world. And that could be um, a purple sun and maybe a polka dotted elephant or maybe giraffes that have wings. Um, you know, when we have our freedom and our imagination and our expression at that young age, we are free to dream and imagine in the best children's books. One of my favorite examples, if we were to stop ourselves and talk about that stupid, that doesn't mean anything, who's going to care? Can you imagine if Dr. Seuss said, cat in the hat, that's stupid. Nobody's going to like that. <laughs> I just can't imagine a world without fox and socks or hop and pop. And so I don't know. I don't know, man. I just think that that imagination is everything. That creativity is everything. Your expression is everything. Your freedom is everything. It's everything. So, um, Anyway, I think that's it. There's more questions. There's more. I'll answer one more. If anybody has one more question, I will put the ways you can stay in touch with me one more time at the bottom of the chat. And thank you to Ramona from Book Baby for being such an amazing support. She's really there to help you. You call She'll talk to you. She'll talk to you about your dream and she'll help you and she'll help you figure out how to save time, how to reach that, that finish line without the headache and heartache. Um, and I appreciate your time, Ramona. And I appreciate your, your, all your love that you give to each and every book baby author. All right. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to read the chat and see everything. I will get back to each and every one of you. And um, I have the class, Get Brave, Be Brilliant, that starts Tuesday, next Tuesday at 6 p.m. I have the free booklet, or for the booklet, it's $8.88 uh, that helps you unlock your blocks. You can do a private coaching session with me. You can do all three, or you can come to Sedona. Come to Sedona and spend some time with me on a weekend in November and get your book done that way also. So I appreciate your willingness. I appreciate your dreams. I appreciate your effort. Um, and Sharon, is that how you pronounce your name? Sharon? Wants to know more about the writing class. Okay, it's called Get Brave, Be Brilliant. And I'm going to utilize photographs and other pieces of writing and philosophical quotes and some poems. And what we're going to do is talk about the places where you feel stuck or shy or quiet. And I'm going to open you up to my teaching method around writing as a conversation with yourself, how it's an invitation, not an expectation, how to tap into your you-ness. I teach a very specific method. And then we're going to present um, all kinds of interesting writing. And then I'm going to work with you and coach you in real time around places you might get stuck, things that you're afraid of. And I talk about how to write around difficult topics because we all have difficult topics. I'm going to talk about how to find inspiration, where to find inspiration. It's such a good class. It's one of my favorite classes. So I hope Sharon, I think that's how you pronounce it, that you will join me starting Tuesday. 
All right. There's still 80 of you on here. I'm amazed. <laughs> Is there something I haven't answered? All right. So Dr. Brenda, you want information about Sedona, Arizona. Absolutely. I will make sure you get an application for that retreat. It's November 6th, 7th, and 8th. And it's called Right to the Finish Line. And it's about publishing or uh, finishing your book. It's whole weekend is hyper-focused on all the ways we get you emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, and tactically unstuck, because those are the places that, that we, we struggle. <laughs>